I have a, quite a few things to cover. At any point, you feel like you want to stop me, stop me and ask questions. I might go through a few segments really fast as it might not relate to some of your businesses. And then if you feel like we should dive deeper into something that's more specific, I know that we have organization, we have uh, social media. And uh, Hilly, what do you do? do web design and branding. Web design and branding and photography. I know Aliyah has her businesses. <laughs> All the things. All yeah. the things. So I'm curious just by a show of hand, when was the last time that you feel like you had a conversation with AI? So what I mean by that actually is, when was the last time you used AI as in social media? Everything that you see on your feed is going to be AI programmed by algorithms. What about Netflix? Every show you see is AI programmed for your specific needs. What about the music that you listen to? That's also generated by an algorithm that's gonna look at your patterns and it's gonna figure out what you like and what you don't. What about Amazon? What's on your shopping list? That's all AI generated. And what's funny about Amazon, actually they're the first company that have incorporated AI in, the, in their processes from the very beginning. And when did Amazon start? Talking about what? 10, 15 years ago, they started using AI in their processes 15 years ago. So AI is not new. It's just now it's become more in the press, if you may, because of ChatGPT, because of the fact that it's been so fastly advancing. But AI algorithms have been at the, at the foundation of everything that's online. So that's what I mean. Like you might think that you're not using AI, actually you've been using AI for quite a bit. You might be an expert and you don't even know. So I don't even know why you're doing this because by, by the, all the times you've used it, you know more than what you think you do. So with that, just be aware that a lot of the AI is making decisions behind the scenes that you might not even realize. These days it's in our appliances, it's in our cars, it's in on you know social media like i said that's an easy one it's in all the binge worthy shows that we see on tv and all the things that we interact with and it's just part of our lives you can say no i don't want to use ai i want to use ai or i'm not using it because you already are so with that a little bit of introduction about me i am the ceo of a production a agency called three fun events is actually based in meridian but like you said, I do a lot of business outside of Idaho. I always have, and I've made a name for myself in many other places. And it's for um, several reasons, but also because it pays better, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. I'm also the host of Events in Mystified podcast. It's a podcast specifically for the event industry, uh, but uh, it has been diving a lot into the AI technology, especially since in the last uh, year. I also am the founder of Feed Mindful Mavens, and that is a coaching program, but specifically for event professionals and professionals. And then I have, those are two communities that I've been nourishing, women behind the scenes in events. And that's just because I come from a background of event productions, and I've been for the longest time, the only woman on a event team with a lot of guys around me. And I felt the need to create a community where I found some of those women, like where are the women? And because I've been in this field for 20 years, it, it also became this place where we started gathering like, oh, there's more of us and we can all thrive. So there's that. And over the years, I've got a few accolades. I'm also a certified wellness professional for meetings and events. And got a few first places in natural bodybuilding competitions. Again, I care about bodybuilding, but not only as a natural sport. And for me, that's important to make the difference because there's a lot of bad rap that bodybuilding gets, especially when it comes to steroid use and substance abuse. So with that, I also have two kids, 10 and seven, and apparently they're entrepreneurs. Yesterday, yes. they had this lemonade stand that they made themselves like the stand. I don't even know where they got the supplies. I'm like, we don't have lemons. Where did you go? They went to the neighbors. Literally, they went to the neighbors and asked for lemons. Do you know how much money they made in one day? 
80 bucks. They made more money than I made in my Zoom calls yesterday. Let me just tell you. And I was like, wow, you guys are amazing. And today was a little bit downer because they didn't make as much money. And I was telling my son, I'm like, that's the that's their life of business, baby. This is a good lesson for you to learn. Some days you work really hard and it pays off. Some other days you work just as hard, but there's no payoff. And well, you have to, that the same people drove by and they thought, okay, I bought yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much it was like that was the case. I'm like, baby, you you can't just like get the same customers. But it was just so funny. It's like he would go, I wanna hear from you guys when it comes to AI. If you're thinking of incorporating AI, what is one of the challenges that you think you could use it for? So grab that QR code with your phone, and that's a uh, poll that you, you're you going to engage with, and uh, I'm going to actually see it in a minute. But first, I wanted to make sure that you get the QR code. All right. We all got it? Pick one of those words. No, just pick your oh. your own words. No, those are just some that that's a screenshot from a previous so poll. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So while you do that, what my goal is to really go through a few an AI glossary just to make sure that we're all on the same page and we speak the same language. Some prompting basics. Now I have an entire ChatGPT beginner to advanced prompting engineering uh, techniques that um, I'm gonna have a QR code for that you can go and watch on. YouTube, especially if you're planning to use ChatGPT into your uh, processes, into your content creation, into your marketing efforts, it's good to know how to engage with an LLM. And then we're going to look at this uh, current AI landscape. We're going to see a few real world uh, applications of how AI can be used in a business. And then we're going to look at some AI tools as well. And then we're going to end with why is it still important when it's when it comes to technology to still keep that human touch in our interactions. And then if we have time, we'll do some um, questions. And I wanted to start my timer because uh, how much time do I have, Leah? I have about 30 minutes. Okay, so let me start that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so here's the thing. We are moving from Google it to AI it. This is words that you're gonna hear more and more. Like when somebody tells you, hey, how do I, like how do I know what, what's the weather today? Or how do I know which uh, trip to take if I'm going to a new city? You're not gonna Google it anymore. You're gonna AI it. That's what ChatGPT is gonna do for you. And I have actually uh, mapped entire trips to Europe and to Mexico just using AI. And I'm talking about not just destinations, I'm talking about from the ticket purchase all the way to figure out what my uh, whole route is gonna be, all the way to places to eat, to things to do, everything that under the sun that you can think about when it comes to planning a trip in a different country that you've never been before, it was generated by AI. So think about that as we move into the future because it is a game changer. Now, here's some uh, recent data. This is from uh, last year's December census. And the adoption rates uh, right now um, is about 77% of businesses are engaging with AI, 35% are actively using it, and about 42% are exploring its um, potential. Rhode Island is actually leading the way in the US when it comes to AI adoption. Idaho is sort of like over there within like five to 6% adoption rate. and People and companies that are planning to use it are anywhere from like 9% and up, which Idaho is one of them. And most of it, technology companies are the ones that are really leading the way, but it's becoming more and more prevalent, especially in businesses when it comes to um, productivity processes and, and all the strategy behind marketing efforts. Now, the disclaimer here is, when you implement new technology, you have to think of it more of a like a three-legged stool. You have people, you have processes, and then you have technology. And while it's great to think about technology as being a great uh, part of your processes, without people and without processes, you're going to end up with <laughs> expensive work processes. So you have to look at all your processes. You have to look at what you're doing and where can AI support that and still keep that human element in so that you don't lose touch with your customers. 
And with that, let's look about at a few things that when it comes to AI, as people are throwing out all of those uh, acronyms, what does it mean? I mean, if you heard generative AI, anyone knows what that means? What does gen AI mean? The generation of the of any tool that you want to create. That's the, that's good. Yeah, it's basically it's a, a system that's capable of generating new content and probably that's what you're referring to and that has to do with text images audio based on learn patterns from data data is something that you would feed the the algorithm to know what what you're looking for gpt stands for which is generative pre-trained transformer it's a large language model for generating relevant text from prompts that's where you have a chat gpt gan is a train generative model that is using sort of like a competitive framework between a, a generator and a discriminator. And that is what is used for image and text generations. If you think of Midjourney or Dolly or a Claude, for example, NLP is a field for computer human interaction via natural, via natural language which covers understanding and generation. That, that's another term that's been used a lot in, in the AI world. LLM is what you would call what ChatGPT is. It's an ad, advanced AI for understanding, generating, and translating natural language capable of composing text and answering questions. LPU is a specialized processor for efficient natural language processing and that's sort of like what feeds some other processors such as Gork. And I'm gonna show you Gork in comparison to ChatGPT and how much faster it is. And that's because it's built on a processor. It's almost like the machine is made for generation versus ChatGPT is kind of like a software, right? AGI is artificial intelligence that is theoretical in the sense that it has a broad, flexible intelligence. It's similar to humans. It's capable of doing what humans do, especially when it comes to intellectual tasks. And then ASI is the future of AI. And that is where we're not there yet, but we will get there, where it's suppressing human intelligence in all aspects, including creativity and decision-making. And that's where some of the LLMs and uh, AI that we're dealing with right now, it's not capable of doing. It still needs humans to give it instructions, to give it direction, right? So understanding these terms really helps you when you see them thrown around in media and in places like the internet to know what exactly we're talking about here. Basics of prompting. Now, I'm not going to go very you know, deep into this just because there's a lot of uh, information to go there. But when it comes to prompting, just to understand what that is, is the practice of providing this AI model, this LLM, with a specific input, which is the prompt, so that you get a specific output. Now, before you even do on any of this, uh, my recommendation, and it's something that I cover in uh, this workshop that I mentioned, you have to prime uh, the um, LLM. You have to prime ChatGPT so that it knows you, it knows your voice, it knows your tone, it knows your style. So then when you generate content, it sounds like you. It doesn't sound like some weird person writing your emails. <laughs> it actually sounds like how you talk, how you interact, how you have conversations with people. And I have several prompts, especially in this workshop that I mentioned, where I show you how to do that based on the content that you have created before. So you have the prompt, you have the response generation, and then you have the prompt engineering, which are which is the this craft of prompting in order to enhance the response in quality, in relevance and accuracy in a way that it serves you best. What makes a great prompt is basically a few things, clear and concise language. So like when you're talking to an LLM, which is GPT, for example, you are talking like you're talking with a human. Like I wouldn't go and ask Leah for some crazy things just to get directions to this place. You know, I would call Leah, like, Leah, how do I get to business and bubbly because I don't have a saving my calendar? The same way you interact with an LLM. The person that you assign ChatGPT is how it will be acting as. So let's say you want to create your content for the week on social media, and then you can ask it, 
act as a social media manager and generate a week a week long schedule for me to write about this specific topic. And now he acts as this authority, as this you know specialist. The information and examples that you provide that is the that is the input basically. So that is something that he would reference in the chat history so that he knows. And once you start a chat with, say, with ChatGPT, it will remember like the conversation all the way from the top. So like you can just go pages deep and it still references what you said in the beginning, right? So you do, it doesn't lose the context of what the conversation was. And then refinement. Refinement is basically, you're gonna wanna go back and say, okay, well, I don't wanna fly to Las Vegas and watch shows all day long. I actually wanna do something outdoorsy. Give me some options for that, like refine your, your search to provide me with some other output. And this is the QR code for that live webinar. You can save it, it's gonna be, it's on YouTube, yes? I have a question in yeah. With the algorithm inside ChatGPT, if you're talking about one topic and then you create another chat for another topic? No, I will show you okay. my search history in, let's see, where do I have it? You can see my top here. But this is my ChatGPT. Here's my history okay. of conversation. And I name them and I label them so I can always go back. So it has this conversation here had nothing to do with this conversation here, but this conversation here will totally remember, like if I, if I go in it, all the way to the top, right? Like uh, this is a short one, but like if I had something longer, like you, you'd go all the way to the top, right? So it remembers all of those. Okay, so this is a great webinar. Again, it's a workshop that you can watch on your own timing to figure out how you can use it best, especially on practical everyday prompts, effective prompting, focus prompt frameworks, uh, general and advanced prompting. And let's go back here. And then when it comes to how do you use AI for small businesses, if you've never used AI and you're thinking, well, why would I want to go through the whole trouble of like learning new technology and incorporate new things? Because, you know, learning something new, it's always has a learning curve. Just think about, you know, if you interact with customers, with clients, it really helps to elevate your customer's experience. It also helps you make informed data driven decisions based on analytics. Many times I would actually uh, take ChatGPT and I feed it spreadsheets with my data analytics from my Google Analytics. So it reads it and it translates it to me so I can, I can figure out where are my efforts, where should my efforts be, especially in my website? Where should I, what should I change? Like it helps me code my own website. All I have to do is take a picture of the code and say, help me and enhance this coding. And it gives me literally like HTML coding and C++ and I haven't coded in C++ since I was in high school. <laughs> and it literally takes you one step by step. It helps you learn new things that before you wouldn't even think about doing, you know? So also like think about efficiency in operations, streamlining processes, I love streamlining processes. If any way I can do to save time, sign me up. And it can also have reduction in cost, especially if you can embed it in, in key roles that now you no longer have to, you know, spend a lot of money to have to have it done. And again, an, a few other ways in which a small business can benefit, targeting digital ads, writing copy, analyzing SEO keywords, any content that I put out there on my blog, it will have some um, SEO keywords that are being analyzed against what uh, SEO is being used for that specific content. Uh, you can use personalized chatbots. I have a chatbot on my website that will tell me exactly who is uh, tapping on my website, where are they going, and it comes straight to my, to my watch. 
So I know who's on my website at any given point, and I know what web page they go on to, and I know how, how much time is spent there. And all of that is just because I have embedded uh, AI into the processes. And then, you know, if you're a content creator, uh, I produce a lot of video content, like being able to repurpose video and then cut it and slice it and just put it out there without me having to put effort behind it, repurpose, uh, I.O., I use that all the time like I don't even have to think about where my videos are going anymore I just need to get my first uh, video on YouTube and from there it just goes in all the places and I'm done right so here's a snapshot of the current AI landscape and I have a few of those and some of you you're looking at this you might feel overwhelmed it's like me when I go into Target <laughs> and all I want to do is like find one black blazer and I know some of you love shopping but for me that is nightmare like big nightmares. Like I came in here because I'm looking for one thing and like right now I'm so overwhelmed. So this is what the, you know, this is just some of the, the AI tools. Just a day ago, as I was prepar preparing for this, Entropic, which basically produces the cloud image generation, came up with the, their top version of cloud three, which apparently has is already outperforming the top models like ChatGPT4 and Gemini across all major benchmarks. This is like, as, as I'm preparing for a talk, things are just changing. So what you might see here, you're like, oh, this is great. Tomorrow might not be applicable anymore. Like I do this all the time and I do them fresh and new because things are changing so fast, right? So. This is just some of the content automation, business AI tools. The next one is uh, copy marketing strategies. You can use some of those AI app avatars. I'm gonna show you how I use my AI avatars and I have them across platforms. And I, especially for my podcast, what I do a lot is I would record the podcast then I run the transcript to ChatGPT and ask for the three key takeaways. And then I feed that to my AI avatar and that becomes my, in, becomes my intro to my podcast. So basically my AI avatar in my likeness comes on video and says, hey, tune in into today's episode because this is what we're going to talk about. And it gives you the three key points in one minute. And then I start my podcast. And I use actually AI avatars a whole lot for, here's the thing, as a woman, to look this pretty <laughs> takes effort. <laughs> to get on video every single day takes effort right? Like you don't want to just show up like you woke up like a guy would do like, you know, my shave or not. And they're like going to be putting out content. I have to make sure that I'm somewhat presentable. Well, guess what? My AI avatar looks so presentable. And I, she looks great all the time. She looks great all the time. All I need to do is literally like feed her. And let me, let me show you guys like she's actually, she's hot. Her name is Mira. <laughs> just for the like I gave her a name. Let me see if I can find her. It's so funny because I can't see my top of the screen and like, I don't even know. Where are you? Oh, hey, Jan. So this is the one of the ones that I use and I have quite a few. So like, this is the ones that are already created. Uh, like today I used this one. I made this one for an intro. Let's see if it's gonna. In today's episode, your host, Anka Platon Trufan and her featured guest, Danny Stefanik, demystify the exciting. That's not your real face. That is me. Oh, okay. It's that, just her, not her voice. So it's, it's just not her voice because you can choose different voices and you can even speak different languages. And you can cho change the pitch, you can change the speed. So this is like a little uh, faster. Like I make my avatar speak a little sp faster because I want it to be, you know, within a time frame. So yeah. yeah, it's like so many things you can do. I actually, I was interviewing this guy, Danny, the other day. And he's like, you know, for the last three years, people have not seen my real face on LinkedIn. All they have seen is my avatar. And only the people that meet me in person know that the person that they see on LinkedIn telling them all the things and sharing advice is an avatar, it's not me. And to me, that was like mind blowing because he's talking about three years ago, not just like this Last year, year. Yeah. exactly. All right, so a few other tools just for your, and you can get those slides, I'll have a QR code for it. But like for marketing, meeting minutes, I use a lot of those. Sales, leads, CRM, ads, analytics, there's a lot of tools. AI chatbots, TDO is my favorite. I'm playing right now with 
another one, but TDO is like my main one that I go to all the time. So really we're living in an age where AI isn't about just who has the most money, but who has the most creativity to harness all this AI power. So it's about being smart. It's about using the tools that are available and it's not longer about who's the biggest and has the bigger marketing you know, team to put all this great content. Now you can outdo them easily with the AI tools that are available. So it's, I was thinking of that song, it's raining, man. <laughs> well, basically it's raining LLMs, which one to use, right? So I have, you know, the original, right? ChatGPT is basically the one that has, has come on the market and it's been known the most. And by the way, if you don't use the paid version, I highly recommend that you pay the $20 a month to do because there's so much more that you can do with uh, the premium versus just the 3.5 one. Now, Gemini Pro is what used to be Google Bard and it actually runs a two month free trial. If you want to use it and just, you know, to compare it, get on that free trial because it's worth it. Grok is a startup that um, it's so much faster than all the other LLMs. So if you're looking for something that's like really in depth, I always go to Grok. Now, there's a little bit of a confusion here because Elon Musk came up with this Twitter slash X companion, which is uh, called Grok. And it's funny because when Grok came out, and not to be confused with G-R-O-K, which is Elon Musk AI, he was so pissed. <laughs> Because obviously, when people say one thing, it's like it sounds like the other, right? So you're not happy with that. So super fast, it's almost like your race car. Claude is the longest conversation that you can have with an LLM. And Claude 3 is the fastest right now when it comes to generation of text and images. I love perplexity. Actually, I was comparing all of them for one task the other day. And perplexity gave me, I was trying to create a manual for someone to use all the content that was available on the internet with videos, with introduction to this one piece of soft software. And I ran it through ChatGPT, I ran it through Gemini, I ran it through Croak and Bing, and then I ran it through Propaxity. And Propaxity gave me the best results with links, relevant links and everything. So it was like interesting. It's free for, I don't know, 25 pounds a day. All of those are free if you, if you don't use it a lot. But if you do use it a lot, and especially if you're a content creator, ChatGPT Premium, that's where you can save all your searches and you can go back to them and really dive into, you know, say some posts that you have for this client so it doesn't get lost. So you can go back to it and say, okay, now re rewrite this in a different tone or, or enhance this or elaborate on this or whatever. AI is my favorite one that I use for LinkedIn. And I literally, no longer actually spend a lot of time to respond to LinkedIn messages. I just use my site to do, do it for me. It's super awesome. So as easy way for you to incorporate AI into your processes, say you use Gmail or anything that's, you know, Outlook or I don't know what you use for a, a mail service. Gmail plus ChatGPT Ch can, can write your emails. I actually have some plugins into my Gmail and ChatGPT is a plugin that you can have as well if you have the, the pro version. And instead of you having to think about, okay, I have to respond professionally to this email, to this person, and they're kind of annoying me right now. What ChatGPT has enabled me to do is to remove my feelings <laughs> from the response and I can still sound professional and I can still respond in a way that sounds like I'm not pissed at this one person, even though I might be, and I can just send it out and I'm like, I'm out. I don't have to be putting feelings into this conversation right now. And even responding no to something that, you know, you're like, if you're a, if you're a people a pleaser, you're like, I don't wanna say no, like, <laughs> actually so easy. <laughs> if you just use AI to do it for you. So I use all of those for multiple things, content creation, anything that I uh, like podcast scripting, video scripting, anything that has to do with generating, elaborating on thoughts that I have. Now, here's the key. It's not like ChatGPT is rewriting your blogs. You still have to come up with an original idea. 
you still have to have some expertise in some kind of field and niche. So that, like, for example, somebody is asking, hey, how can I organize my life in a way that is productive? You can give them some ideas starting from an idea. Like, you're not just going to go, like, I mean, you could to give it like a zero point prompt and say, okay, give me some ideas and see what you know, right? You can do that. Or you can say, hey, how about this person is this and has this challenge and I'm trying to solve this problem, give me a solution. And now actually has a, some background, some context to that, right? And it can be done in all ways. Notion is where I keep, basically it's my project management of all the things. I keep all my content, all my blogs, my LinkedIn posts go in there. And I even like have in Notion here, let's see, but oh, here. I have a list of like, this is where all my life is in Ocean, you know, and it's everything it's in own containers. And, and I have this like cold DM prompt tutorial that I literally have list of like prompts that all I have to do is copy and paste. If I have to send a cold e email or I have to come up with a cold idea to this product or service, I have it all done. Or say I'm actually out of idea for blog writing. I have prompts for it. <laughs> like I need a blog post that will tell a story about this product or service that I have and how it has helped my ideal customer achieve this one goal in a relatable and engaging way. I have all my posts down. Like all I have to do is copy and paste. And I put a lot of work into having all those prompts, like social media. It's like, oh, so I'm looking for this. Like a marketing campaign online that will leverage the authority and expertise of this type of influencer that you, I don't know, you follow to educate my ideal customer on the benefits of my own service and persuade them to make a purchase. I mean, there's so much that you can do with ChatGPT. You just have to know how to prompt it well. Like even if you don't use any AI tools at all, that is like golden just in that itself, right? So, so much to be done just there. That's why, like, this is the simplest way you can integrate AI into your processes. Now, if you're me, you can create your own GPT. This is my AV production GPT that is serving right now the event industry. And it has been trained on a 20 year data set of knowledge, which is my knowledge is data knowledge from other experts. It's my podcast conversations, all my podcast conversation of five years with over 200 conversations and scripts have been fed in it. So it has AI knowledge, it has AV knowledge, but also more than that, it has my bias towards diversity, inclusion, and equity when it comes to more female representation in the field. So I'm like telling my story with my own GPT because I want to make sure that that's an element of consideration in somebody wanting to plan an event. So you have a knowledge that they are based yourself and you want to create your own GPT, you can literally feed it all your knowledge and you can make that private or public or sell it. Like there's people that sell GPTs that have been trained on specific data sets. And now you're like, why would I want to use this GPT versus just go to chat GPT? Well, I'll tell you why. Let's say you want to buy cosmetics and you go to the grocery store. Would you buy your cosmetics from the grocery store or would you go to Sephora? I personally would go to Sephora, <laughs> right? So that's why like, if I'm particularly looking for information in one specific niche, I would go to that GPT. So I, just recently I used Hire GPT to hire uh, someone for, uh, for um, a company, for a client that I've been uh, actually hired myself to find the right expert for this one company. And I went through the whole process of hiring and I use Hire GPT to create the entire framework for, for hiring for them. And that went from creating the job description to the questions we asked during the interview to the process of onboarding this person. I mean, everything. Let's say you're interested in fitness. You go to a GPT that has all the information about fitness, nutrition, wellness, so that you know that it's specific to that alone, right? So just think about of the power that is being used right now in just simple things like that. And, and just open your mind in like how that could be incorporated in your own business. Now, another example, if you're gonna start small, I travel a lot uh, for business 
I have all the expenses that I need to keep track of. And I, I mean, I could have like a, my finance, get all those receipts and put them in my booking software and all of that. Or I could also snap pictures of my receipts, put it in ChatGPT, have it analyzed because it has the computer vision and export it as a spreadsheet. And now I hand that spreadsheet to my bookkeeper. Now input this in my booking being software. And you've got all the summary of expenses. This is just an example of like me going to Florida and spending some money at a Starbucks store and then uh, spending some uh, money on this car that I rented and then the parking expenses, the food that I bought, whatever. It's like, all of that you can do with ChatGPT by just reading, you know, your information. Like I would take pages from a book and say, hey, read this page and summarize the key points. And it's all in ChatGPT. Again, the pro, the pro version. Again, you have to have the pro version to be able to have the computer vision. So Compose AI. This is where I told you, like, if I don't feel like answering to, a to an email, like I don't even have to honestly respond to emails because I can have that plug in. And let's see if I can go to the... I am always self-taught. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. She puts in hours. I put in hours of research. No, I, I mean, I should tell. Yeah. So above my head right now. <laughs> just, okay, so, so let's just take this example, right? So I have my friend here, Andrews, like reminding me that I have this thing that I need to go to. And I wanted to respond to it. And here's where you can have literally like one. It's like you can just have that there. Or uh, obviously, I'm not going to send that to him because I already responded. But let's just say another client is like, okay, I'm going to respond with this. And it's almost like those live chats. Yeah. Yeah. It's you like. That? Yeah, so those are plugins. So that's where you need to have, right? Like you'd have this plugin, like if I want it enabled. On your desktop. Yeah, uh, on my e Chrome. So yeah. like right here, if all I wanted to say is say yes, literally it just wrote that to me. Okay. That's, my that's so fast. Yeah, wow. exactly. So obviously I will read to make sure that I'm not sending something stupid, but it starts reading my emails and knowing me, right. and then it responds like I would respond. And my, again, my best one is when I have to say no or say thanks, and I don't have to put feelings behind it because mm -hmm. you'd be like, I don't want to say no to this person. <laughs> AI does it for me. I don't have to. Like, especially if, you, if, if I have to say no in a nice way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so much to do just with that one tool. And Compose AI is free. Again, all of those tools, like some of them will need a monthly subscription, but what I'm, a lot of the things that I'm mentioning are free because I know a lot of the uh, small business owners, they don't have the money to spend $20 on this one tool and then another $20 on this tool, and another $20, because it adds up. Like, uh, at one point, I'm like, I had to go back in my uh, memberships and be like, okay, what am I spending money on and like, how, where does it add up to? I end up like adding to like over $500 a month. I'm like, okay, we need to scale back because <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really demoing a lot of those tools as well, right? A Zapier and ChatGPT, let me give an example of how Zapier can be such, an, such a great automation. Now, I just helped uh, someone that came to US, they're immigrant, and they barely spoke any English, and they wanted to start a cleaning business, like, you know, go into houses and clean. The problem was she, she couldn't get back to, cust like, to the people via email or messaging because she would speak like this broken English. So what it took was like a, literally a, a small automation. When the email came in, Zapier would read that uh, email and it had ChatGPT embedded into it. Again, you need to have Pro for this one. And then it would respond automatically to the customer. Thank you so much for, you know, whatever. And yes, I'll be there at this time and blah, 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 blah. And just by using this small integration, she was able to increase her business revenue for the first quarter to like, like double the amount because she was able to get back to customers. She was able to speak to them without her having to like break in sweat 
that she couldn't say it. Like, you know, it's like all she had to do is like, even if she responded was like uh, to, to prompt the AI to say yes or say no, or yes, I'll be there. Like just something simple that like it took the effort out of her having to come up with an elaborate email that sounded professional. So just those are just simple uh, examples on what you can do. I use Agent Herbie and Lindy. What those are is AI agents that talk to you via email. So what I use Agent Herbie for was when I was interviewing dozens of candidates, I would literally take their resume and email it to Agent Herbie. Yes, there's an Agent Herbie and ask, okay, here's the job description. Here's the resume. Can you summarize the key points from this resume and give me three questions to ask this person during my 15 minute interview with them? And also look for any gap in their history so I can bring that up. Also anything that, that's like out, out of the norm or anything that I should be aware of and give me a rating from one to five. How do they relate to like, what is, you know, what's their relation to this specific job description based on their experience, based on what I'm looking for. And I got rating like this person rates as a three, this person rates as a four, this person rates as a one, and you should ask them this, or you should inquire why this or that. Yeah, and I didn't that have to. You, that also helped you, like, if it was on a scale of one to five, or five was good. Exactly. And decided, I exactly. And I honestly, I did not choose. interview anyone right. that was under three. Right. Like, I would only spend effort into looking into if I wanted to right. dive deeper into that resume. So you that, be your best man. Exactly. And now I didn't have to go through like pages long of resumes of trying to figure out like what's a good candidate. Because again, when you hire and you're a small company and you get about hundred resumes, that's a lot of work. And I, I've done it myself <laughs> and trust me, it's a lot of work. So those are the two agents. Then you doing it. Oh, you already saved me like, oh my gosh, like hours, so right? much, more than hours. Because now I had the process and all I had to do is just feed 20 resumes at once and get my report, schedule my calls, and now I had like the report in front of me when I was talking to them. But getting so. from like, where I am, massive <laughs> confusion, I mean, I'm saying, and I'm like a, a one person show. Oh, but yeah. Saying, no, but still, but just even being able to get to that, that to me looks like a thousand hours, you know, to get to But it's, that's anything. the thing, it's not complicated. Once you can incorporate and you, you know where to start, like what's the right tool for you. And that's what I consult with small businesses on. Okay, you don't have to use all the tools. You just need to find maybe your top three tools to incorporate into your processes so that you can spend valuable time on things that matter versus you trying to figure out like how to do things all the time as a one person show, right? So that's kind of the idea. Another example with, this was the idea with the urgent, uh, with Agent Herbie actually. Mm -hmm. So I, I had Urgent Herbie provide a task. So this was another one. What the site is called. Uh, no, it's actually Herbie at, like, I forgot exactly the email, but it's like, literally, it's an email that I sent to Her Herbie. Herbie is the agent. So I actually ran a listener survey on my podcast, and I received over a thousand, like, I had a Google form that was sent out to my uh, podcast listeners, and I received over, like, a thousand entries. Now, some of them, because I actually had a price attached to them, I could tell they were duplicates. Like I could tell that somebody was just trying to get on, exactly, right? So then I wanted Agent Herbie to analyze the spreadsheet and then remove all duplicates and all the answers that did not seem like accurate or uh, relevant, and then regenerate the document to include only the relevant answers. And then it gave me a brief. So it, it told me what it did, and then he told me exactly what the expression is going to include. And he also outlined what it was going to do, what the tasks were for it to do. And then it gave me the, it responded with a spreadsheet. And now I had a spreadsheet of about, you know, 700 that I could run a, like a generator to get a winner, but I wouldn't have entries that were duplicates anymore or, or bots that try to get, you know, the price. So that's another example of like how easy it can be like versus me having to go through, like look through that spreadsheet that was like, yeah. So another, so this is like, again, examples of things that I have incorporated in my own processes to just get more productive, to get more efficient. Bardeen and Notion is another example that I'm gonna 
show you here next, which is really great because it creates a lot of automation. Notion is again, what I use for my CRM and for my project management. You can use any other uh, tool out there, but it's, it's an option. Another way, if you do a lot of AI meetings, I mean, Zoom meetings, I, my calendar is connected to Reclaim AI and that does calendar blocking, time blocking for me. So I have specific things that are non-negotiable on my calendar. Now my calendar is also uh, free to kind of like open to my client. So they have access to it 24 hours. They can block things on my calendar. So if I don't have things that are blocked, somebody could schedule a meeting with me at 8 a.m. because that spot would be open. However, Anka at 8 a.m. wants to be on the treadmill. <laughs> she doesn't want to have me meetings with anyone. So I have created habits in Reclaim AI where I say, okay, between this time and this time, this is my gym time. Nobody can have access to my calendar. And it goes and it blocks it in my calendar. This is my lunch time. Yes, I do schedule my lunch because if I don't, I don't eat. <laughs> No, seriously, this is my kids pick up time. This is my kids drop off time. And this is my focus time and it funds time. Or I have projects that I work on and I needed to ask, uh, I needed to have it blocked, open spaces in my calendar based on like, say I wanted to prepare for this presentation and I need about uh, 30 minutes each day. It would go and find those spots. And now I don't have to do it. It does it automatic, automatically for me. Zoom has now the AI companion. What I used to, and I still use actually a whole lot, especially if I have meetings over Meet or um, Microsoft Teams, read AI, oh my gosh. It's like, it's my AI assistant in the background taking the notes and it's so accurate. It will take, like it literally gives you the talking points. It gives you who talked the most. It gives you what their sentiment was towards you when you were talking to based on visual, based on like, so much data like like if they liked you like it will give you a percentile like if they felt like they're positive towards you or not like so much information and now you can gather from your conversations i don't join any zoom meeting without read ai and then i can go back in those conversations especially if i have a lot of meetings and i and i'm reminded okay so what did i talk to this person what did i say i would follow up with and it literally gives you a report every single meeting so amazing tools to use to just enhance your productivity it no, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't it matter because you will still read voice intonation and it has so many data points that it actually reads by and it's, it's amazing. Another thing, if you need organization or project management, Monday is another great tool to use and it links to your calendar and it really organizes your life and organizes your processes and your projects so that you can be that superpower that... You already are, but it's kind of like, <laughs> it takes a lot of work. Your, yeah. So here's another LinkedIn strategy. Now for me, a LinkedIn is the place where my ideal client is. Uh, maybe for you is Facebook or whatnot, but if you're a business that, ser that has a service, LinkedIn should be your place, your focus. And Question. yes. So like a service, like even like, like if I had to cheat. Would that be something people would Why not? Like, do, do people brighten their teeth? You put, you literally position, if you position it as like, hey, if you're going to show up in, some, in, in, in person to a meeting, do you want your teeth yellow? Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Or if you're speaking in front of people, there's a lot of professionals on LinkedIn that are speakers, they're coaches. Like, just think about it. Like, if you're positioning, again, going back to that content creation mm -hmm. in a way that any professional, if that becomes your ideal customer, then you position yourself to that professional and then you create content to enhance the, you know, the service. Absolutely. Yeah. Like everybody could be whitening their teeth and should be, you know, if you're going to speak to people or be in front of people. Right. So here's one thing about LinkedIn a strategy, the golden hour for any post. Now you don't have to post a whole lot. Actually twice a week is enough for LinkedIn algorithm to give you the most impressions. Now, LinkedIn is different than Facebook because it has a longer shelf life. LinkedIn will show you a post from a week ago, whereas Facebook, stay, say you post something today, tomorrow is gone, is lost in the sea of content mm -hmm. on Facebook. LinkedIn doesn't. LinkedIn will show you content like over several days, which means your content has more legs, right? But here's the, the trick here. The golden hour is the first hour after you post. If you can get 10 comments to your post, you're gonna get over a thousand views and impressions 
in less than 24 hours in that post. And why you want impressions? You want people to see it. You want to be first in their mind, right? So every comment you make on LinkedIn, this is another thing that's important. On Facebook, it's not true. You don't see other people's comments. On LinkedIn, you see every comment that you make is shown to your network. So you better be commenting nice things. <laughs> but this is also your opportunity to speak to the world and be an authority in your own niche. This is how, when actually a lot of people come to my profile and I have right now, I think over 5,600 or something of followers. And that's important for LinkedIn because those are people that follow me without even being connected to me. And I have over 5,000 connections too. But what I mean is they come to my profile and they want to uh, engage with me because they saw a comment I made on somebody else's post. And that was like, oh, I want to learn more about this person because they said something smart. So to build your voice on LinkedIn, I will follow that three times five plan, which is three comments per day, five days per week. And if you have Max AI, like I said, you don't have to like, oh, go crazy and try to think it's like so what am i gonna do to let's see if i can get to like i can see like i will literally just ask it to respond to that specific like to something so someone yeah exactly yeah. let's see if i can get to here okay, i think my time is running out guys so let's just say i wanted to respond here and literally it's gonna provide me with I think this is um, usually faster it's just the internet so I just copy and paste that and I'm done here's one comment and move on to my next thing you know so that's like the golden rule for LinkedIn and the goal on LinkedIn is to get uh, top voice in whatever niche you have. And I have right now three top voices that I kind of like alternate between. One is top voice in event planning, one is top voice in AI, and one is top voice in event production. So those are things that, that sets you as the authority in your own niche. Here's another example, an automation that I run to analyze LinkedIn leads. Like literally I would go on a LinkedIn post and I have this automation that's built through Bardeen that copies LinkedIn post commenters to a Google spreadsheet. And then that spreadsheet is run to ChatGPT to analyze for leads. Which one of those people are most likely to be my ideal client? And then I connect with those versus just like randomly, you know, getting a bunch of comments and not doing anything with it. That's an automation that's already built. Another one, I have a LinkedIn contact that's copied into any of the LLMs that I have. And then, Based on their profile and their post and their comments, I have an automation with Bardeen that it tells me if this person, how should I interact with them? How should I connect with them? What should I talk about if I wanted to reach out to them? Because now it's based on their own post and their own information, right? So another one here, LinkedIn actually lets you export your data. And I mean your entire data. And what you're gonna do with that, you're gonna prompt any of the LLMs with your own data, after you requested your archive, archive, which usually takes about two, three days, you're gonna upload it to ChatGPT and you can ask it to do certain, certain things. One, you can craft unique LinkedIn posts on the top on specific topics that matches, you know, um, your whatever service audience. Or you can identify key reasons why this one particular client should be interested in your service. Or my best one was I asked ChatGPT to analyze my LinkedIn connections, all my LinkedIn connections, and give me the top 20 that I should, sh should prioritize to engage with. And guess what? The 20 that he looked at all my content, their content, our industries were not on my like, purview at all. And I was like, huh, and they're part of my connections. I'm like, maybe I should spend more time engaging with these people because who knows, right? So here's what I'm going to go fast through because it's just pictures and you don't even have to snapshot anything because you're going to have the, the DAC once you get it. But prospecting tools, if you're prospecting 
there's there's tools for that. My strategy is quite lightweight and it all it's all based on audience segmentation, which again, I get it from Google Analytics. Then I see who's engaging with my website based on TDO, which provides me with engagement tracking. Then I take it into Prospect.io, which is my personal lead generation for that specific audience. And then I have this automation that is created through Bardeen that sends emails based on sort of like that, that audience that I want to engage, my ideal client, right? So here's an idea of content creation. This is a whimsical map plugin for ChatGPT that literally, if you give it some, like, okay, show me some in a, if you're a visual learner, show me a way in which I can create, like what should be my process for content creation? And literally like you start with the idea, create a script, you can choose what format, you can distribute it this way. I'm like, it's all there, right? Do you create text to images? I use Midjourney, I use Ideogram a lot, and I use Dolly. Dolly is embedded in ChatGPT Pro, but really my go-to are always Midjourney and Ideogram. I feel like Dolly is a little like cartoonish too for my taste. So every image that you saw in my presentation has been created with Midjourney or Ideogram, everything. Like every image that I create right now on LinkedIn is generated from those two based on my topic. Next to speech, this is where those uh, avatars come, right? So I use HeyGen, you can use Santasia as well. Eleven Labs is the original one. If you want to create text to video, I use InVideo and Pictorai. That is amazing to create, like especially if you have a product and you don't want to use a lot of B-roll because you don't have B-roll, it creates B-roll for your product. Like you just have to give it the idea and it already has a collection of like amazing bureau that can just put over words and over images. This is Sora, it's, it's ChatGPT, it's, it's, it's coming up with their own video generation, text to video, and I'm not gonna play it, but it's amazing if you go to ChatGPT and just look at Sora, oh my gosh, the images that are created here are like beyond anything you, this is the future of filmmaking. And it's mind blowing. Um, here's my uh, AI avatar that I've been creating and I'm using a lot for like a lot of, you know, introductions, a lot of like product explanations. Like you can create a whole manual to your customer base without you having to be on video. All you have to do is script it or even have ChatGPT scripted for you and then feed your avatar to be on video, right? So, so much to do here. Graphic design. It's, obviously probably use Canva. Jasper has been famous for its own right. Uh, Sensei, Adobe, Logo AI, there's so many out there to use. Writing copy. Canva also has a few of them already. It does, and he had it for a year. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Copy AI, Simplify, Flowrite, this is for writing copy, or again, you can always go back to ChatGPT. You don't have to necessarily use those ones, but those are more specific. For podcasts, I use this script to basically edit most of my scripts right now. I used to pay someone to do it actually. And now I have, to, I remove every filler word from my, like with just one click. I get summaries, I get transcripts, I get timestamps, I, I get my key takeaways. Everything is in the script because it's been like, they're really ramping up their AI. And uh, there's other options there as well to, you know, either, uh, record or to um, distribute content. Repurpose, Gloss AI has done really great with uh, snippets, then, then you still have to take them manually to repurpose. But right now I use repurpose uh, IO, which it does it for me. Like I created my templates and I have a template for a square post for a Instagram story. And I have one for like a video 16 by nine and it just sends it to all the places. Like it goes to my Instagram, it goes to my TikTok, it goes to, to YouTube Reels, like everywhere. Like, I, and it's on a schedule. Like I don't even know, like just get a post on Instagram the other day, I'm like, oh, I forgot about this one. <laughs> Cause it's already scheduled, you know? And it, again, it comes from the source, from my own YouTube. All right, AI assistants, as I mentioned, you have Lindy, Merlin, Personal AI, Herbie. There's so many out there that you can use. I would stick with one. I would you know, find which one is, you know, something that I, again, I tested a lot of them and then I still, I'm still drawn to one or two that I, I use consistently. Chatbots, if you, again, if you have a website, you should have a chatbot because that chatbot should be custom 
optimized for your own content, for your own information, for your own niche. So like when my chatbot interacts with my customers, he already knows what he wants to ask because I trained it to do so, right? And then here's the human touch in the AI world. At the end of the day, with all of this technology and it's moving in that direction, people will still want to work with people. Here's the reality, right? Even though right now it sounds like 77% of businesses are using AI, 35 are uh, actively incorporating into their processes, 42 are on the fence. We are moving into a world that's going to be AI driven, but human is still that driver that's going to be driving ethics, driving empathy, driving collaboration, not competition, and having the ability to be have a mindful approach over processes, over the digital technology that we all use and the digital future that we really are going to live in. And with that, again, for DAC, for the AI resources, for the link to that chat GPT webinar, this is the QR code. And my advice, I guess, is to really embrace the, the, the change. <laughs> You're gonna have to start somewhere. I know it sounds and feels overwhelming, but if you start in small steps, like just look at ChatGPT first and then start, try to see how you can use that in just creating relevant. I'm telling you, there's so much content that you can create that's useful in your own niche. If you I'm just, so afraid of it. and I, I understand that. However, if you're going to, it's your own pace. If you're going to start, start small at your own pace, but give it a chance because you're going to see time that you can save that now you can do can other things easier. much, much easier. Right. <laughs> Together, you know? Exactly. Yeah, you know, like when you started playing, playing when you started and... pickerball, like I bet you're like, how do I use this thing, right? It's with the same way with everything else. And I have a strategy consulting that I do with small business owners. Today I have a 50% off on that. So if that's something that's really interesting to you, just know that I, I'm available to have a conversation with you. And then I also have a free, uh, okay, this is my LinkedIn profile, but on my LinkedIn profile, I have a free series that I run, which is every Wednesday at 10 a.m. I, I go over two, about two or three tools. It's only 30 minutes long, but I literally dive into a specific tool, AI tool. And that's based on a, a poll that I run the week before and say, People want to learn more about Max AI, and then I just dive into Max AI, or they want to learn more about ChatGPT, then I just dive into that, or they want to learn more about integration, like how they can build those uh, playbooks in Bardeen, for example, to integrate into their strategy for LinkedIn and for um, lead generation. Then I dive into that. So I do that for five weeks. I started last week. That was more of an introduction, but I'm going to have another one coming up. And those are also streamed to Facebook, to my Facebook on Trifun Event and YouTube. But really, my audience is LinkedIn, and that's where I focus most of my efforts in. And uh, yeah, and with that, again, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, that's my QR code. And that's it. Yeah. Sorry, I went a little bit over time, my girl. Awesome. So thank you, Anka, for sharing with us. That was so much good information <laughs> and good tools that we can, I think we can all implement. Hello there. If you're eager to host an AI workshop for your team and supercharge your team's knowledge and skills in the world of AI, connect with us now. We're looking forward to seeing you at one of our upcoming AI bootcamp to learn, grow, and take advantage of the exciting opportunities that come with AI knowledge and literacy. Connect with us to craft a custom-built workshop or bootcamp for your team or upcoming event.